A 75-year-old woman had progressive paraparesis and voiding difficulty. The diagnosis was herniated disc with severe myelopathy at the level of T10 and 11. A midline skin incision was made. A tubular retractor was dug on the indicated facet complex. A transforaminal transpedicular approach was used. The coastal transfer vasectomy was not needed. The inferior articular facet of T10 was removed. The superior articular facet of T11 was removed. The removed bones were later used as photographs for unibody fusion. Part of the rostral portion of the T11 pedicle was drilled. The discectomy was done with curettes, curves and punches, and disrongers. First, a zero-degree endoscope was used for visualization of the disc space close to the thickle sac. Curettes were used to remove the residual discs. Another 30 degree endoscope was used for a more panoramic view of the ventral dura sac and this space. One of the residual discs was removed by this ranger. A complete decompression without any residual herniating disc was confirmed with the endoscope. Then the percutaneous screws were applied and the raw system was set up. Obtaining a true AP fluoroscopy view of the intact level is the fundamental step of percutaneous screw placement. In a true AP view, the M pedicle can be delineated. The pedicle can be screwed through between the starting and end points, which are immediately lateral and medial to the pedicle rim on AP fluoroscopy. A peck needle was advanced from the starting point to the end point in the length of approximately 2.5 cm or an inch. Once the peck needle was advanced 1 inch into the pedicle, a lateral fluoroscopy view was obtained to check the depth of the needle tip. A guide wire was then inserted through the peck needle into the cancellous bone, and the peck needle was replaced by the guide wire. The pedicle was prepared by placing a tap over the guide wire and through the dilation sleeve. Then the pedicle screw was placed with its extensor. Similar procedures were then repeated for each pedicle. Percutaneous rods were inserted, compressed, and locked. The contour of the whole construct was then checked by biplanar fluoroscopy. The MRI showed complete decompression. The patient had a complete recovery after the operation. Potential advantage of minimally invasive transferaminal thoracic interbody fusion include less of tissue dissection, less blood loss, no invasion to the pleural space, and shorter hospital stay. However, there are limitations of this approach. Resection of the thoracic herniation is not always achievable posterior laterally. There are several conditions that one must be cautious when attempting to use this approach. These conditions are central disc with large calcification, severe dural adhesion to the disc, thoracic OPLL, and severe obesity or barrel chest 